Hi guys, it's Dave at Humble Trekker Channel. How are you doing today? I'm going to be demystifying magnetic declination and its effects on land navigation. There are three different definitions of north that we have to be aware of for navigation. Number one, the most obvious, is true north, geographical north, polar north. That is the point at the very tip of our planet. I'm using this apple to represent the planet Earth. So in this case, the stalk is true north, geographical north. That part right at the top of the planet with a pole sticking up. Now, our magnetic compasses, unfortunately, do not point to this true north. They point to something called magnetic north. Magnetic north is a point on the Earth's surface, or it comes out of the Earth, but it's uh, defined by pointing the Earth's surface which is not quite near the exact true north. It's a point, say it's a point here. Now, if you're standing on the planet somewhere, and I'll draw a line like this, directly north to south, that goes through magnetic north to true north, and say the equator's down here. If you're standing exactly anywhere on this line on the planet, your magnetic compass will indeed point directly at true north. And if you're on this line, that means your magnetic declination is zero. But if you're not on this line, if you're to the east of it or the west of it, your compass points to magnetic north and it's not pointing directly at true north. And we have to compensate for that. And we compensate with that with something called declination. There is a third north, which is also very important to our navigation. And that is the north we find on our maps. All maps have grid lines marked on them, and the top of the map is north. Now these grid lines are called your map north or your grid north. These lines do not point directly either to magnetic north or true north. They point very closely to true north, but because of the fact we have to put a globe around a spherical uh, form onto a flat piece of paper, it becomes distorted. So these lines do not match up exactly with lines that point directly to true north. We can summarise this concept thus. There's one true north, the line that joins you directly with the very point the north pole of the planet. There is the north lines on your map, which are slightly different from that line that takes you directly to the north pole. So grid north, and there's the magnetic north, which points in a slightly direction again. We describe the difference between true north and grid north as the difference between grid north and true north, and this will be printed on your good quality maps. Secondly, we describe the magnetic declination of your compass north, your magnetic north, and you get can it take two numbers for that, or two figures for that. The one that is most important for navigation on land is your declination from your grid north, because you navigate using your grid north, not using true north. So, in this example, we have a magnetic declination to grid north of five degrees. There's a difference between grid north and true north of two degrees. So the actual declination of magnetic north to true north, in this case, would be seven degrees. And because we're on this side, on the east side, it's seven degrees east. You'll find the information about your declination for your area on your good quality maps in the key. This is for land navigation maps. Now let me show you something interesting, sea navigation maps or a maritime chart. Now, the reason we have to think about declination is because it can give you an error when you're traveling. Uh, when you travel small distances on land, declination is not that big a deal. And I'm going to come to why uh, further on in the video, so stick around for that. But if you're traveling by sea, or indeed by plane, you travel many hundreds of kilometers, or hundreds of miles, or even thousands, without ever seeing any landmarks. <clears throat> and then the error you can incur in your journey due to magnetic declination is very significant. So if you look at maritime charts, they make a much bigger deal of showing you declination error. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So this is a maritime chart. And on maritime charts, they have something called focus, a compass rose. And their compass rose shows you very clearly, graphically, the declination you have to weigh about. And it also gives you information about how the declination changes over time. <coughs> So this map was printed in 2010, all the information is from 2010. And it says to me, the declination error is five degrees east 
and then in parentheses it says 0 0.1 east and that means every year the declination increases by 0.1 degree east so I was using this uh, map for a skipper's course in 2013 so I just made notes that in 2013 the declination was 5.3 degrees east let's use this information that we put up on the whiteboard to show practical examples now when you're using a compass and a map there's two cases that you're going to come across number one you're going to point your compass somewhere you're going to take a bearing and you're going to take that bearing and then put that bearing onto your map or chart in this case i picked up the chart or you're going to draw a line on your map you're going to find out the bearing from your map then you're going to take your compass and you're going to point your compass around to point in the same real direction as you've drawn on the map so you go from you either go from map to compass or compass to map so let's show how to do that and adjust for declination this is an example of going from compass to map so you see the apple here imagine this apple is a distant mountain and instead of this being set up on a table I'm holding this compass in my hand and I'm pointing it at the mountain so I point my direction arrow my marching arrow at the mountain which is the apple and when I've done that then to get the correct uh, bearing or azimuth I then rotate the compass bezel to put the red magnetic north compass needle into the engraved red arrow there it's done now this has given me the magnetic compass bearing and I can't see because the camera's in the way but it looks about 158 so in this scenario this is me at the point x and i've made a visual sighting to a mountain in the distance and my compass has told me that that's 158 degrees is the bearing towards that mountain now say the reason i took that bearing is because i don't know where i am on my map but i know where the mountain is on the map how do i get an exact bearing from me to or I'll draw a line on my map from me to the mountain given the fact I've got a magnetic bearing of 158 degrees the information we said earlier we'll use an example that our map declination error is five degrees east so I've got 150 I know a few things 158 degrees my compass tells me and I know that is five degrees wrong to the east so to put a draw a line on my map from me to the mountain which is exactly the bearing that I've measured I have to add 5 degrees to 158 thereby 5 plus 158 163 and this is the line I find a line or I draw a line of 163 degrees on my map from me to the mountain as that is the exact line that I've just measured visually now let's say I wanted to do the opposite I wanted to I knew exactly where I was on the map across me and I wanted to go to a mountain but I couldn't see the mountains because it was cloudy or foggy but I could draw a line on my map from where I am to the mountains and when I did that I got a bearing from my map of 163 degrees now how do I go from that line on my map of 163 degrees to find out what it should be when I point my compass around it's the opposite process when you've got an easterly declination you take away the number the figure the declination figure five in this case so it's 163 minus five takes me back to 158 so i've set my bearing on the march now to 158 i now have to get the magnetic needle into the red triangle engraved triangle so i turn it until they're aligned the red magnetic tri uh, needle is in the red engraved arrow and then I would follow point this at something in the near distance and follow that arrow in that example I was using an easterly declination that is my magnetic declination error is towards the east of the grid north you could just as likely be in an area where your magnetic declination error is west of the grid north and in that case the way of moving from map to compass or compass to map, map is reversed in summary a westerly declination is known 
also known as a negative declination. Westerly declination or negative declination, two words for the same thing. In the case of a westerly declination or negative declination, otherwise known as, when you go compass to map, you take away the declination. So if your declination is five west and you read on your compass 180, i.e. directly south, the map, the line you draw on the map should be 175. When you go from map to compass, if you draw a line on your map of 180 degrees, when you draw, when you sight that visually using your compass, you should add the declination error five degrees west. So 180 becomes 185 on your compass. And as an example we worked through, for an easterly declination is also known as a positive declination. Positive declination means the same as easterly declination. When you go compass to map, you add the declination. If you read on your compass, you take a visual bearing of 180 degrees. If you draw a line on the map, that 180 degrees becomes 185 degrees. When you go map to compass, you take it away. So if you draw a line on your map of 180 degrees, you take away five degrees, it becomes 175 degrees when you visually sight it using your compass. All right guys, now having gone through all of those basics about adjusting for declination, what it is, all the different uh, types of north, grid north, magnetic north, polar north, I'm now gonna explain why for 90% of all land navigation, you don't have to worry about it. Let's get back to the whiteboard. Let's look at the figures, how declination affects our navigation in a sterile environment. So I wanna travel from along this straight line, from point A to point B to point C to point D. B being one kilometer away from A, C being two kilometers away, D being three kilometers away. Let's assume, let's go back to our scenario, we're working with, uh, in an area where our declination is five degrees east. If I did not take into account declination and I walked in a straight line from A to B, how much would the error be? Well, over that one kilometre stretch, by the time I got to B, I would be about 87 metres wrong if I, were, if I walked in a perfectly straight line. So I thought I was walking Let's assume this is a direct northerly route. If I assumed I was walking north, but I wasn't, I was walking five degrees east of north, I would arrive and at point 87 meters to the east. Now, of course, the question is, would I have walked exactly one kilometer? Say this, I'm walking to a, a river, and the river is exactly parallel to my starting point. So I'd have actually walked slightly more than one kilometre by the time I got there. But not the, the difference is so minor, only a five degree angle, you can forget about it. It's about 87 degrees, 87 metres wrong. If you'd actually walked, say, exactly one kilometre, so your triangle would be like this, not a right angle triangle, it's only about half a metre distance difference. So, say 87 metres wrong. Then you go to two kilometres, what would my error be? 174 meters so I'm 174 meters off after two kilometers and by the time I got to three kilometers I'll be 261 meters off now the question is how significant is this and my opinion is declination for land navigation if you're not in a desert if you're in where the type of area I am wooded hilly plenty of landmarks around you can more or less not bother compensating for declination because you're going to see a landmark upon your way that will put you back on the straight track and also in a real environment it's virtually impossible to travel for even one kilometer in a straight line even if you go across a, a farmer's field um, you won't travel in a straight line anyway you won't even attempt to human beings don't like traveling the straight lines you'll always try to find the easier way to walk. To walk in a direct as the crow flies direction is not something that human beings do. And actually, research has been done, crows don't fly in a straight line either. Animals just don't do it. You're always trying to find the easiest way to walk for your physical body to move. You won't walk through a wet area. 
there may be a stone here you won't, you won't go over. So this theoretical error that you're building in, by not taking into account declination, is not significant enough in real life land navigation to be considered. If you're traveling across a desert, a polar region, something like that, then yes, you do have to. But if you're in normal Northern European, Northern, uh, North America type territory, not in a desert, not over a featureless landscape, declination is not a significant issue to you. If you're traveling by ship, sailing, yes it is, but then you also have to take into account drift and all sorts of other things that's gonna affect your ability to move from point A to point B. But you can see, even for five degrees, which is quite a large declination error, you're gonna be wrong. Let's look at uh, 10 degrees. If you're in an area with 10 degrees of declination error, the figures you're looking at uh, after one kilometer, you'll be 176 meters in error. After two kilometers, you'll be 352 meters in error. And after three kilometers, you'll be 528 km, uh, meters in error. Okay, after three kilometers, you will be over half a kilometer out. But I come back to my argument that the possibility of traveling in a direct straight line over three kilometers is so is not reasonable it's not realistic you're going to be taking a path like this anyway and then you're going to be saying oh i'm going to come to i've looked at my map i'm going to come to a small hill there's a ditch there there's a road there there's an electricity pile on there unless you're out over like as said in desert areas extremely barren terrain the need to, co to compensate for declination is minor when land navigating but it is something you should know about and you should know how to adjust for it but do consider that it's not going to be a big deal for your general everyday navigation uh, as a rule of thumb those figures i just showed you if you want to round them up you can say if you're in an area of five degrees error after one kilometer you'll be 100 meters out if you're following exact straight paths after two kilometers 200 meters out so you can say for a five degree error you're going to be 100 meters out for every kilometer traveled uh, for a 10 degree error then you can say you're going to be 200 meters out for every one kilometer to travel if you can just remember those numbers in your head that's going to give you a good idea when you're considering whether you should be needing to uh, adjust for it on your particular journey so let's look at this declination question in the context of a real map situation let's make an example that i'm standing at the northern shore of this small lake here this point here pointing with the corner of the compass and i want to make my way to the south easterly shore the southern shore of this small lake here which is actually a swamp but uh, let's call it a lake it's designated as more of a swampy area than a lake or maybe a dried up lake bed but anyway we want to go from this lake to this lake and this is i can fantastic little compass here I can tell by the scale. So this is two and a half. It's actually three, three, um, three kilometers. So in this map, this area, which has got a five degree declination error, if I was to travel in a straight line without compensating for declination, I'd come about 300 meters to the east of it, something like that. So say I'd actually arrive about there, here, which is not what I want to do. But let's look at this map, let's look at the features. I wouldn't travel like that. First of all, I can see there's some raised ground here, some high ground here with a swampy marshy area in between. So from here to here, that's about the first stretch. I would say that would be my first stretch, one kilometer. I'd strike off, there's some high ground here. I'd go around this high ground to the right, to the left, to the west of it. And then I'd find this swampy ground. I know I was on the right location and I'd go over to the east or the west depending which was the easiest way to get around this swampy ground probably when i'm on this high ground i can then see this railway line i'd go straight down to that and then i can see i've got two more sections of high ground in front of me i'd probably try to pass between the small valley there and then after i'd gone through that small valley i can then see there's some more high ground here i'd go towards that i'd climb up onto this high ground from this high ground 
I'd actually be able to probably see the southern shore of this small lake. It'd be about 400 metres. If not that, there seems to be a farmhouse here, described here, and some roads. So just on this small example, there would be absolutely no need for me to try and follow a direct straight line from this northern shore to this southern shore of this lake. And even if I wanted to, it wouldn't be the most convenient way of getting there. And it would, because of all the landmarks on the way, it would be easier for me to travel in small sections, four to 500 meters at a time, if I deduce my location and continue to hit this shore, which is only 100 meters wide. So to find something 100 meters wide over a five, three kilometers walk, not bad. And I would never bother to really compensate for the five degrees of error. Hundred and ninety one. Hundred and ninety three. Hundred and ninety four. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that there's another aspect to adjusting for declination and that is your ability to accurately read a bearing using your compass. Two aspects. Firstly is how accurately you can point at something in a distance and then adjust the magnetic needle to be in the red engraved triangle and then read that. That's one aspect. Every time you do it you're going to get a slightly different reading. Second aspect is, is an imp, their compasses are not super nuclear atomic accuracy. There's a slight margin of error in the compass needle every time you use it. And the scale, you can have the scale in exactly the same position. If you give it to one person, they'll say that's a hundred, well let's see, that's a hundred and eighty-four. You give it to another person, they'll say their eyes aren't, they don't look at it exactly straightly, they'll say that's 185. You give it to another person, they'll say that's 183. You can't read your compass, well you can read your compass down to an accurate number, but that number is not necessarily exactly what you're pointing at. So if you're looking at a declination error of five degrees, your compass has got maybe half a degree naturally built into it because it's, it's not, uh, that's how accurate it can be. Your eyes might read it slightly wrong, you look at it at a slight angle, so you build in all those errors, and they're probably likely to build up to about five degrees anyway. So then if you compensate again for five degrees, you just may be putting errors on top of errors. You have to accept that navigating with a compass like this is not an exact science. It's not gonna put you onto uh, a one penny a mile away. It's gonna put you onto maybe a tennis field one mile away. Or sorry, a tennis court one mile away. We don't play tennis on fields, we play them on courts. So there you go, there's a natural accuracy that you're never gonna be able to, there's a natural accuracy in reading the compass that you cannot go above. It's not down to a millimeter. We're talking large distances it'll get you to, which then you can eyeball, which you can move towards. Declination is a need to know piece of information if you're seriously getting into navigation. But in terms of practical application, you do not have to be extremely accurate. We as humans do not travel along straight lines when we're walking through our normal environments where you're probably likely to be. As said, if you are living in a completely flat tundra, desert, featureless landscape, then this doesn't apply to you. But I'm sure most of you are in areas where there's plenty of landmarks, landmarks you can follow. And when we walk, we walk towards a landmark, we reorientate ourselves, we have a feedback loop mentally, physically, that then takes us to our next location. We're not walking along dead straight lines. We're not ships in featureless oceans traveling for hundreds of kilometers where then the declination would take us a long way from our exact uh, destination. When we're traveling in, in the bush, in the woods, in the fields, the hills, the downs, wherever we are, we're walking towards something and we do that as a natural ability and we do not look at just a compass direction, just a flat map. That's not how we travel. 
and therefore that's why declination for land navigation is not a big impact for most of us. If you want to find out your declination of your area, the primary source should be your map. <clears throat> a little bit of a word about maps. Maps are not all created equal and the declination information imprinted on it might not be accurate. You have to look at the date and you have to look at the, um, it should give you an adjustment over the years. But that adjustment over the years I've noticed on maps is a little bit uh, dodgy, difficult to understand because there's normally two dates on a map. The date that the information that's contained within the map was created. The cartographers, the geographers, they went out and they made the maps. But then those maps get reprinted and republished and companies purchase the right to publish these maps. And there'll be another date. That is the date that the map is actually published. And it's not always clear if the declination information on the map is from the, the date the map was created, it was originally created, or from the date that was published. There are other sources. There's websites that you can go to, and I'll leave a link in the description box of uh, one or two websites, depending on what I find, where you can go. You can just click on that. You can type in or just click on the map where you are in the world, and it'll show you the declination on a map, on a, on a graphic on the screen or on a table. A uh, word of caution or worse, something to think about there, is that that declination might not be accurate to the map you're using because, <clears throat> what should we say, that declination might be a declination from polar north but you need to use a declination from your grid north on your map. So if in doubt, use the declination that's printed on your map and not something that you've pulled off of a separate website or web source. <clears throat>